lesson for September the 25th is entitled A Glimpse of Heaven. The key verse is Revelation 5.12, which says, in a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. The scripture is from Revelation 4 and Revelation 5, the lesson focus. Jesus alone is worthy of our worship. In the overview, it says that the last book of the New Testament, with all its symbolism, is difficult to understand. Theologians have been examining it for centuries and have major differences on its meaning. However, according to the New Testament and Wycliffe Bible Commentary, the book's very name, Revelation, is derived from the Latin word revelation, which means to reveal or unveil that which is hidden. There are at least four principal schools of interpretation listed in the above commentary. For our purposes, we will adopt the future scheme of interpretation. We will assume that Revelation is a prophecy of things that were to come after it was written by John. Christ allowed John to actually see into the future. Christ gave him this experience to prepare him and the generations to follow for the last days for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the introduction, it says in this passage, John was invited by Christ to peek into heaven. What an awesome opportunity and responsibility were entrusted to him. Without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the experience would have been impossible to describe. As you study, pray for understanding and wisdom to make this portion of God's word real and relevant to you. In part one, it says power and majesty emanate from God's throne, and the text is from Revelation 4, verses 1 through 11, which says, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it, and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder in front of the throne seven lamps were blazing these are the seven spirits of god also in front of the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass clear as crystal in the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front and in back the first living creature was like a lion the second was like an ox the third had a face like a man. The fourth was flying like an eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne, and who lives forever and ever. The twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne, and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. After penning Christ's words for the seven churches in earlier chapters of Revelation, Christ invited John into heaven. He reported that there before him was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice sounding like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. These words came from the same voice that dictated the letters to the seven churches in the beginning of Revelation, Jesus. In the next verse, John described his own frame of mind. He was completely open to what the Lord had to show him. At once I was in the Spirit, 
and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. Instead of identifying the one sitting on the throne, John described what he saw, and the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Throughout scripture, the throne is a symbol of power, and through stones represent many things. The New Testament and White Bible Commentary says that these particular gems are used in priestly garments and symbolize holiness, wrath, and mercy. John saw the throne of God. What power and beauty he must have seen. Next, John described the other thrones. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders, dressed in white and wearing crowns. All other kings were subjects of the king of kings, God himself. Flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder came from the throne, and in front of the throne seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also, there was what appeared to be a sea of glass, clear as crystal. Eschatologists have had many discussions about who the elders or kings are, but it appears from the description that God had given them great power on earth and also in heaven. The seven lighted lamps that depict the seven spirits most likely refer to the attributes of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. What a wonderful picture of power and majesty we are given. The four living creatures with wings and covered with eyes described in verses 6 and 7 may appear to the casual reader spooky or even scary, but a little study gives depth and relevance to this difficult passage. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. There are many theories on what these creatures represent, but John may simply have been emphasizing that all living things in heaven and on earth are subjects of the Most High God, the King of Kings, the one who sits on the throne John was viewing. The most important part of the message is that they are all continually saying day and night, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And each time the creatures gave praise, the twenty-four elders fall down and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Hallelujah and Amen. What more can a humble child of God add? John seemed to be so in awe that he asked no questions of the angel, Christ, God, the creatures, or the elders. He was in spirit. He observed. He wrote. Apparently John did not even get involved in the worship as he traveled throughout the heavenly places. He fulfilled the task he was assigned, recording the prophecy of the Revelation, the Apocalypse. In part two, it says a search begins for someone worthy to open the scroll and its seals. And the text is from Revelation 5, verses 1 through 5, which says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then John saw the king of kings, the one on the throne, with a scroll, with seven seals, and a mighty angel proclaiming who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. But there seems to be sadness in heaven, for no one in heaven, or on earth or under the earth, could open the scroll or even look inside. Even John wept at his helplessness. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. 
he is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. How quickly the picture changes to excitement. The lion rescued the scroll. In part three, it says the lamb is worthy to open the scroll seals. And the text is from Revelation 5 verses 6 through 14, which says, Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne, and when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. And I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Drying his tears, John saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne. Since the lamb was standing, it was clearly alive. This is central to the Christian message. Christ is referred to as the Lamb many places in Scripture. He is the final sacrifice for humankind's sins. He has been victorious over death. He is the only one worthy to open the seals. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. The four creatures and the elders seemed to have switched their focus from the King of Kings to the Lamb. They fell down and offered bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And here their song changes. They sing, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Then John heard the voice of millions of angels encircling the throne and the creatures and the elders singing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom, strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Any commentary on this verse seems trite. Christ the Lamb alone is worthy. He purchased our salvation with his very blood. He defeated Satan here on earth and in heaven. He gave us an example of holy living and the ability through his spirit to live victoriously until we join him, our Lord and creator, the perfect lamb, in the home he is preparing for us in heaven. We can wholeheartedly say with the four living creatures and elders, Amen as we worship and praise him now and throughout eternity. In today's life application, it says a study of the end times can be interesting, exciting, or even scary. But as Christians, we know that the Old Testament sacrifice for sin, the Lamb, was replaced by Jesus, the Son of God. The perfect Lamb of God became the sacrifice once for all time. It is only because of this that we can be presented to God in eternity victorious overcomers bought with the blood of Christ. Jesus is the only one in heaven or on earth worthy to open the sealed books of heaven. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Amen.